Hello and welcome to Books Without Barcodes where I, Heroin Bob, review books written before the 1970s, thus the no barcode. So for this video I will be reviewing Starshine by Theodore Sturgeon. Look at this absolutely amazing cover. This is a collection of short stories that were originally published in the pulps. So pulp magazines, sci-fi, fantasy magazines. Uh, in between the years of 1940 and 1961. This actual collection, book collection, was printed in 1966. So if you have never heard of Theodore Sturgeon before, that may be because you are not a fan of Star Trek. So Theodore Sturgeon actually wrote one of probably the most well-known and revered episode called A Muck Time for the original Star Trek series that was season two, episode one, in which he wrote, live long and prosper. So that phrase, which has stayed true throughout the entirety of all of the Star Trek series, was written by this man. So this man was born in 1918 and was an active writer from 1938 until his passing in 1985. He wrote several short stories as well as some series episodes, a couple of novels, and was a sci-fi and fantasy writer critic as well. So again, short stories written between 1940 and 1961, which is Unfortunately, something I had to remind myself multiple times while reading these stories. This is a collection of six stories. The first one is Derm Fool, which can be considered a horror thriller kind of a story. The Haunt, which is a pure horror story. Um, the Artan, Art, Artnan, Art, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's a made up word anyway. So The Artnan Process, which is a sci-fi story. The World Well Lost, which is another sci-fi story. The Pod and the Barrier, which is a sci-fi story. And How to Kill Auntie, which I guess is like maybe a thriller story. This is my notes, by the way. <laughs> now, the first story, Derm Fool, was interesting. I was like, oh, well, okay, this could be neat. It was very innovative. Uh, I will say the first two stories, uh, Derm Fool and The Haunt, are very much manic pixie dream girl, uh, female foil to the male protagonist, you know, 40 years before that term was coined in 2005. <laughs> but the Derm Fool was interesting. I was like, okay, if all the stories are going to be around this theme, this is going to be a nice, enjoyable collection of short stories. Well, that thought immediately pump the brakes when I got to The Haunt, which again is a horror story. Uh, again, a manic pixie dream girl, female foil to the male protagonist, and the, the amount of misogyny that was in that story made me angry. It was also like a buildup of misogyny until you got to the horror part of the story, and then it just like abruptly stops. And it was just... For me, it was not an enjoyable story. Like the actual horror part of the story was interesting and I enjoyed that. The build up up until that point, I could not get over the misogyny. And then the end was just very abrupt. You might have a different opinion if you ever have the pleasure of finding one of these books for $2 at the antique mall like I did. Or you can of course peruse eBay or Amazon for it as well. The third story of the art and process it was a sci-fi story. So the three sci-fi stories that are in process, The World Well Lost and The Pod and The Barrier, Boron kept coming up. And I was like, why does Theodore Sturgeon have a boner for Boron? And I could not understand because if you don't know, Boron is the fifth atomic number on the periodic table. And so I was like, all right, well, let me look up what kind of things would have been made with Boron around the time of him writing these stories. And then I realized why this man had a boner for Boron, and that was because around the time, like the 30s when he started writing and into the 40s, 
boronated fiberglass was invented uh, by, uh, well, the formula was refined by, in the 30s, by DuPont. So in the 40s, borosilicate glass became popularized for its um, coefficient of thermal expansion. So it could withstand thermal shock. If you're wondering what I'm doing down here, there is a cat who is very much wanting attention, just so you know. And then in the 30s, boron carbide and boron carbide ceramic became to be used, which is a, a good absorbent for neutron radiation. So I was like, okay, so all of those boron discoveries and boron materials first started to be used in the 30s and 40s. So that's probably why that stuck in his head because that was during his formative and early writing years. But the art in process was an okay story as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it was just a, a science story. Uh, both my parents a side note, worked at NASA, so I have a hard time reading sci-fi written before the man landed on the moon because a lot of it is just as we would understand as humans in our limited knowledge bad science. <laughs> so it was an interesting okay story that I read. The fourth story shocked me because again this was written between 1940 and 1961 and this is probably out of all of the stories in this collection my favorite story just because I was actually shocked by the content of the story and the ending of the story given the time period that it was written in and especially having read the misogyny in the second story so the world well lost uh, I was actually pretty impressed by and enjoyed the pot and the barrier went, went, went right back to the misogyny and uh, I thoroughly was disgusted by that story. Like the whole, it's a sci-fi story. It did not enjoy the beginning and the middle of that story and the end of that story did not save the beginning and middle of that story at all. It's like the main character in that story switched and uh, it did not save the story. <laughs> but, and the last one, How to Kill Auntie, I just enjoyed that story, but that was the only story out of the six that had a female protagonist, which I of course have some inherent bias in enjoying. Uh, and it was an intelligent female protagonist, which was a grand departure from all the other female characters up until this point in his stories. So, I would say that, so would I recommend reading Theodore Sturgeon's Starshine? I mean, if you're a Trekkie, I feel like you kind of have to. Um, definitely his sci-fi stories in this, you can kind of see it reflected in some of the episodes that he wrote, like Amok Time, but also Shore Lead and The Joy Machine, uh, which are all scripts that he wrote for the original Star Trek. Uh, I feel like it's interesting to see how far we've come as far as a society goes with some of the themes that are in here. And it was, uh, I will admit, a frustrating and angering time. Am I glad I read this book? Yes. So if this is something that has tickled your fancy or interest, uh, I would normally, you know, link it down below uh, to my listing of it because I'm just going to sell these books whenever I'm done reading them. But this one is going to a fellow Trekkie and reseller friend, Matt from Thrift to Life. Uh, so I'm going to send this to him so he can also read it and we can have a thorough, full of spoilers discussion about this book because I need to talk to about it to somebody. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is my first one of this series, so I know this is all over the place, but thanks for watching if you did and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.